cooperation with the Science Fiction League of America. Peace. But the sound of marching feet continues in Europe. Refugees, millions of them displaced, wandering aimlessly across the war-torn face of Europe, seeking only food to keep alive. Any shelter amongst ruins in which to sleep, anything to clothe little bodies. Today, 12 millions are displaced in Europe alone. Some ethnical Germans forced to return to a country they never knew because of the shuffling of boundaries, joining the two million Germans already unemployed. Each day, nearly 2,000 migrate into Western Germany, underfed, diseased, undermined. For some, the displaced persons camps provide temporary relief. But for the core of the unplaceables, the aged and sick whom no one wants, there is no hope in Europe. Their hope must come from you. To help in this cause, the nonprofit organization CARE asks you to send packages today. Write CARE New York or contact your local CARE office today. Tonight, Tales of Tomorrow presents Blunder, starring Robert Allen and Anne Loring. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Earth. Just as it might look if you were standing on the planet Venus instead of being here in this planetarium. Earth being 25 million miles from Venus, our planet would not look much bigger than a giant. And even at that, there wouldn't be many days on Venus when you, the atmosphere would let you see as much of it as this. Now we have had so many questions about what might happen if an atomic explosion got out of hand or if a comet came swinging our way and made a collision, that we have made an arrangement to let you see how it might look from out in space. Of course, you must understand, this isn't anything that's going to happen. The interesting thing is that it wouldn't look like much at all, even if it did happen. Just some light flaring up like this. And perhaps going on that way for a few million years, or maybe, just scattering off into gas in no time at all. The mathematical odds against a comet or a wild star swinging into the Earth's orbit are enormous. And of course, there isn't any human being foolish enough to touch off anything that might get all the way out of control, even with the A-bomb and the H-bomb. No, scientists believe that the end of the world when it comes will be a natural one, not man-made. And it will not come for a matter of some 15 billion years. So I suppose we can all just sit back and relax. Of course, there isn't any human being foolish enough. No, no, Jane. I'm just getting things ready. You see, the activator doesn't work until the switch is thrown. Now, I told you the experiment wouldn't start at nine, and it won't. These last few minutes, Carl, they seem to take longer than all the years you put on this experiment. Well, at nine o'clock, we'll know the answer. After the activator starts the bismuth reaction. Reaction? But, Carl, you can't go through with oh, it. Wait not a minute, until. Jane, I'm not backing out now. I've told you there isn't one chance in a hundred of any trouble. One chance in a hundred? I'll well, call it one chance in a thousand. I've gone through these calculations over and over, and the answer is always the same. Bismuth fission is possible. The pile we've built up down in the mine is going to start off a slow, controlled reaction, not an explosion. But you sent Dunning and the others to Tromso, Carl. Wasn't that because of a danger? Their work here was over, Jane. Now, after the reaction starts, then's when our work starts, the making of contracts, Hiring a full workforce, getting in the lines to get the power out. Oh, we'll have a natural furnace a mile square and hundreds of yards deep. A whole Arctic Ocean to draw on to supply power for all of Scandinavia. Everson, Dunning and Company's going to be big business, Jane. Very big business. I didn't have to make any contracts in Tromso, Carl. But you wanted to send me away, too. Well, we're stuck out here in the wilderness, darling. Why should a man ask his wife to stay here yes, when... Yes, Carl, why should you ask me to stay here when that... 
I never could fool you, could I? You're not sure, are you, Carl? No, don't try to fool me. You're worried, too. Well, all right. Maybe there is one chance in a hundred of trouble. I don't suppose there's any point in not facing up to it now. Well, then you do admit that this could go wrong, Carl. That, that this particular way could be more dangerous than all they've done with uranium and all the other elements. Yes, there is a remote possibility that by splitting the bismuth atom, we might touch off oxygen. Oh, touch off oxygen? Oh, now, wait a minute, Jane. I just said there was a remote possibility. Theoretically, the sun could explode tomorrow, but it isn't likely. Well, this is the same. But oxygen's everywhere. It's in the air. It's in, it's in water. Why, Carl, the whole world could become a gigantic atom bomb. That's right. Well, then... And shouldn't you be reading more data, Carl? I mean, you always used to check and, and recheck your information, and, and this time you haven't even paid any attention. Carl, there were reports from Dunning and the others, and, and you haven't even read them. Why, if Joaquim Ortega gives up on this, well, mightn't the danger be the very reason? I don't know that anybody's given up, Anne. Things that are published are months, years behind events, and I could read myself blind and not be one millimeter further ahead than I am tonight. And what's the point of reading anything when it's so heavily censored? Oh, look, Jane. This dinner was supposed to be a party, wasn't it? Carl. Carl, listen to me. You and Dunning have been working here in secret, but well, outside the there The secret other... stage is over, Jane. My final report has probably already been published. Ortega and Stackpole have most likely already seen it. Now, if they want me to hold up the, the experiment, Jane, it's too late. There's a time for study and a time for action. We've come to the time for action. Hello. Hello, you. This is Carl. What is it? Carl, are you still holding to the schedule? All set. It goes off at nine. The thing is, someone's been trying to get through on the phone from London. I'm not sure what it's about. I can't take any messages now, Hugh. This is important, Carl. I'll, I'll get in touch with you when it's over. I'll be busy till then, so don't try to call me back. Carl, listen to me. You've got to... Look, Hugh, I told you, no more talk till it's over. But it's a call from London, Carl. I'm cutting out all the way now, so you'll be just wasting your time if you try to get me back. But, Carl, listen, you've got... to the fission of an element they said could never be split. Chuling at Stackpole. Why, hello, you come in. No, there isn't it. time. Have you read the Zurich Quarterly yet? Why, we just started it. Just why, what matter? It's Everson. He's experimenting with that bismuth fission theory of his. Ex experimenting? Yes, I know, I know. It'll set off an oxygen reaction. We know it, but Everson doesn't. How, how far has he gone? I don't know. I've been trying to get Dunning on the telephone all day. I can't get through. And well, what shall we do? I've chartered a plane. We've got exactly ten minutes to get to the airport. Wait till I get my coach. Good. I'll get a cab. The cabby! Cabby, here! Cabby! Wait, my phone! Wait, I'm coming! Grandfather, I think you bet. In the old stories, Elena, the princess always kissed the one who was sleeping. <laughs> Grandfather, I didn't mean to wake you. I was just leaving the afternoon mail. Oh, I'm wrong. It was always the princess who was kissed. <laughs> <laughs> the famous Dr. Ortega is never wrong. Uh, there, and if that makes you a sleeping beauty, don't blame me. At <laughs> my age, Elena, names mean little, kisses mean much. So whenever you see me dozing, 
This cable came to the mail? Yes, it came about a half an hour ago. I was wondering whether I should wake you, and then I thought... Is it bad news, Grandfather? Grandfather, the cable, is it bad news? It's from Stackpole in London. He has seen a new report by Everson. Uh, Elena, yes. the Zurich Review with my article on Bismuth. The issue should have been in Stockholm and Oslo for almost a week now, no? You've asked me that before. It's been out there since the 12th. If Everson has seen my article, he can't be so insane as to go ahead. It was in warning to Everson that I wrote the article. Got the material declassified, exactly for him to see. He must have seen it by now. He always reads everything that you... Yes. Everson always used to read everything in his field. Ah, but he has been cut off from all of us up there for years. Crumbs from our table. That's all he has been able to get his hands on. But this time, crumbs aren't enough. He has made a mistake. Grandfather, is it a bad one? He's going through with his mind project. The one I wrote this Zurich article to warn him against. When will they learn that censorship works both ways? You mean, you mean he might start off a chain reaction that couldn't be stopped? There are no absolutes. It might stop when... When the Earth was gone. When the oxygen was gone. The Earth and all life on it would go too, of course. You said this is what might happen. By my equations, the probability is, well, call it a matter of some 200 to 1. You mean one chance out of 200 that Everson's reaction might get out of control? It's the other way around, Elena. The other way around. <gasps> Operator, this is Joachim Ortega calling. I want to put in a person-to-person -person call to Washington. To the President. Yes? The President of the United States. Darling, you don't seem to understand. It's a disastrous mistake that Everson's made. Chuling and I have flown here from London to try and stop him in time. Aye, that I can understand. You can all great lad for stopping things. You can read it for yourself here in this article Ortega put out. Everson hasn't allowed for the factor of K under pressure. I'm an engineer, Stackpole, not a nuclear physicist like yourself and your friend here. I've read your article through twice, and I can see nothing that affects our plans at the mine. If you will excuse me, Mr. Dunning, there might not be 20 people in the world who could understand this warning which Dr. Ortega has written. But Carl Everson is one of them. If he is proceeding, it can only mean that he has not read the warning. I've sent on every scientific journal that's come to us here in Tromsko. If you say that the journal's been out for, uh, since the 12th, well, it's been in Carl's hands now for three, maybe four days now. Dunning, we're wasting time, and there may not be much of it left for any of us. You said that you were in touch with him not ten minutes ago. Will you please get in touch with him again? I'll tell him that you, you didn't want us to interrupt him. I'll tell him that black is white. Anything, anything, if you'll just let us read these equations to him. Gentlemen, I'm sorry, but I, I cannot do such a... I beg your pardon, Mr. Dunning. We haven't much time left in which to avert this error. The radio, if you please. Well, I'll be... The radio, if you please, Mr. Dunning. Dunning at Tromso, calling Carl Everson. Dunning at Tromso, calling Carl Everson. I can tell you now there's not a chance till after the test. What time is it scheduled for? Nine o'clock tonight, but Carl said he was cutting out his receiver till afterwards. Look, Dunning this may be Tromso. only an outside chance. Calling Carl he doesn't need both of us. You can talk to Everson if Dunning raises him. Dunning How about you, Jack? Well, I've made arrangements with a Norwegian Home Minister to let me have a plane Dunning to get through to the mine and paratroopers to make a drop in case we can't land. You stick on here and, Dunning well, Tromso. just wish me luck, will you? I wish you lots of luck, Jeff. Goodbye. Calling Carl Everson. Dunning at Tromso. Calling Carl Everson. Dunning at Tromso. Calling Carl Everson. Jane, can't you remember that this is a celebration? 
In exactly 18 minutes, we'll be showing the world a wonder that'll still be supplying light and heat and power for centuries to come. What about the children, Carl? What happens to the children of the world? Well, they'll be born into a world of plenty. Food, heat, shelter for all. No, I mean, if this goes wrong. It can't go wrong. But, Carl, if it does. If it does, Jane, and that's a very big if. There won't be time for them to suffer. I think I'd like my drink now, Carl. Payday is always a good day, sweetheart. By the way, there was another defense bond in the pay envelope. Here, add this one to the pile. You've certainly saved a lot since you joined the payroll savings plan. I'll say. In times like these, the only way to save is to save before we spend. And the easiest way to save is with United States savings bonds. By putting in only seven and a half dollars a week, in 10 years, you'll have bonds and interest worth more than $4,300. Meanwhile, your savings will be helping to make your country strong, for savings bonds are defense bonds. Sign up for bonds where you work or bank. Defense is your job. Buy defense bonds. And now we return to our tale of tomorrow, Blunder. this program to relay an urgent warning to Carl Everson. To Carl Everson, to Carl Everson, Dr. Ortega of America asks you to hold off until he can talk with you. Don't start the reaction. Hold off and call Tromso. Dr. Ortega asks you to hold off and call Tromso. Turning at Tromso, calling Carl Everson, turning... Now look, Jane, I didn't want you to stay on, but since you're here, remember you're just as responsible for this project as all of us. We've got to go through with it. I'm scared, Carl. Carl, I'm scared. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jane. I just keep thinking about those children. <laughs> Don't you think that I think of them, too? Yeah. Look, Jane, there was a time when I would have waited to check with Ortega and Stackpole. But now it's different. There's a limit to what I can tell them. There's a limit to what they can explain to me. They publish things, sure. Yes, darling, they do publish a little, but what? But it's just the scraps, darling. In Moscow and Leningrad, they can't even publish scraps. But if I can once show them that bismuth fission is a workable, existing reality, I'll make them all talk. Not about war and weapons, but about the full development of this wonderful new power that's coming into our hands. About the simple, inexpensive plants that they can set up all over the world. I'm thinking of the peaceful development for all the billions of people who've never had enough to eat. Of this cheap, limitless power that can end poverty in the world. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, that's a wonderful dream. 
But the responsibility. Do you have the right to take that on yourself? Dunning said that someone was trying to reach him from London. Well, mightn't there just be some factor that you haven't taken into account? Oh, darling, if you just talk to Hugh once more. What good will that do, darling? We know this is going to work. It's for all those children, for the whole world. It's got to work. It'll be a few moments now. Does the pilot know his way from here? Yes, we've trained over this area. 15 or 16 kilometers, we'll be able to see the, uh, the mine buildings. Good. And you might say a prayer that there'll be some buildings left to see. Carl, Carl Everson. This is Jeff Stackpole. Calling Carl Everson. Jeff Stackpole, calling Carl Everson. Ortega says, don't set off the reaction. You're forgetting a factor of K. You're forgetting a factor of... There's something wrong with the radio. Oh, yes, here he is. You got it? Carl, Carl Everson, this is Jeff Stackpole, coming in on a plane. We'll be in over the mine within minutes. We'll land by paratroop in the open spaces just north of you. Carl, Carl Everson, this is Jeff Stackpole. Stackpole, calling Carl Everson. Stackpole, calling Carl Everson. Stackpole, calling Carl Everson. They haven't. Well, please. Please have them keep trying. Yes, it's top priority and very urgent. Thank you. They've got Tromso, but they can't get through to Everson. Two links there with Dunning, but they can't get Everson to answer. Stockpole's gone in by plane. He should be dropping to him within minutes. Good, good. My dear, I think you are in trouble. You think I... Hmm? It's your move, and I suspect you are going to lose at least the bishop. <laughs> Grandfather, you just said that the whole world was in danger, that within minutes we all could be blown to nothing, and yet you can sit here over a chessboard and say... That... Elena, dear, they reach Carl Everson in time now, or they don't. If they don't... There's no remedy that can be devised against this irretrievable blunder. So, let's see about your bishop. But, Grandfather, there must be something that we There's can... There's nothing more now, not from here. What can be done is being done. Perhaps we've all been afraid too long. Now, I have regrets, but there seems very little fear left. Regrets? Hmm? Big ones, little ones. I could wish to have seen you marry. The new strain of melons we are trying out in the garden, how they'll turn out. Those are two of the big ones. For a small one, here's a formula on the properties of magnetic attraction at low temperatures that I would have liked to work out just a little further. But magnetic attraction has nothing to do with bismic fission or... or... perhaps with anything. But I'm still curious. Grandfather, you can put your mind to a new problem when... When I should be attacking your bishop and queen. Elena, I'm sorry. But it's still your move. You think I'm going to lose the bishop? Just watch. Urgent warning to Carl Everson. Urgent warning to Carl Everson. Don't touch off the reaction. Don't touch off the reaction if you see or hear a plane approaching. That is Stackpole trying to help you. Urgent warning to Carl Everson. Dr. Ortega says you're wrong, absolutely, positively wrong. Urgent warning to Carl Everson. Urgent warning to Stackpole, Carl Everson. Stackpole, calling Carl Everson. Stackpole, calling Carl Everson. Stand by to jump. Well, that's that. 
Well, it's just minus 52 seconds, darling. Carl, after it happens, will it be long before we... Before we know? It might be six seconds, might be eight, depending on how long it takes for the acids to eat through the plates down below after the reaction starts. And, and then if, if everything's all right, will we know right away? If it goes past eight seconds, you'll know that we're off on schedule and everything's under control. If it doesn't, I doubt very much that we'll know that it didn't work. Carl, there's one more thing oh, I... Now, wait a minute, Jane. No, no more, you promise. No, it's not about calling Dunning or what's happening down below. It's about us, Carl. I was wondering if you'd kiss me. You say now that I shouldn't. No. I'm ready now. It's time. Well, here's to the future. To the future, Carl. Whatever it brings. And, of course, there isn't any human being foolish enough to experiment with atomic fission. Our scientists know exactly what they are doing. There isn't a possible chance of a blood. At this same time, when Tales of Tomorrow will bring into your home an exciting television play, A Child is Crying, Mr. Walter Abel stars in the gripping story of a youngster upon whom depends the security of the United States. Remember Tales of Tomorrow next week at this same time. The preceding program, originally telecast by ABC in New York, has come to you by special video recording. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.